पूर्ण मिलित जीन तस्म श्री गुरव नम वंशा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नम नमो महाबदनाय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम्ने गौरतिशे नम गुरव गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय तदाल कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तद भक्ताय नमो यं प्रव्रजतमुपेतमेतृत्यम द्वैपायनो विरह कातरया पुत्रे तन्मयतयातर्वोभिनेदो तं सर्वूत हृदय मुनिमानस्मे तवैवास्मे तवैवास्मे न जीवा तया विना राधे माय मिलियंस ऑफ हम्बल ओबेशियंस इन द लोटस फ्लिट ऑफ माय गुरुदेव ओम विष्णु पाल श्री श्रीमद भक्ति प्रज्ञान के स्वगुस्वामी महाराज इन सेम इन द लोटस फ्लिट ऑफ माय शिक्षा गुरु शील भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नाव वी आर एक्सप्लेन अबाउट भक्ति and i am giving oh, so much so many stages of bhakti up to pralad maharaj we have finished and he is in the category of gyani bhakta he is mahabhagavat no anna vilash even anna vilashita and not his bhakti is not covered by gyan karma yog tapasya and anything and he is always praying and so, so uh, he is realizing para brahma that krishna is para brahma nishinga dev is param brahma and that is why he is so powerful and he is transcendental so he has no appetite nothing to serve him but he will serve like father and mother anyone cannot kill him he never tires that i should message his feet no need so this that he always thinks about the appearance of his supreme lord there is something lacking which is, which has been not told in the paribhasha mm. the definition is not fulfilled by his activities mm. what is lacking he cannot use his all senses in the service of krishna because he did his lord never becomes hungry thirsty tired nothing so only he can pray and meditate him only this he can be in association but always he is involved in Appalance of Nishingha Dev or his Lord. So so many things are lacking in this. He cannot use his all senses in the service of his Lord. So more than this, Ambarish Maharaj is somewhat nearer what has told in the definition. He has no desire other than bhakti to serve Krishna, and his bhakti is not covered 
भाई ज्ञान कर्म योग तपस्या एस्ट्रोलॉजी और एनीथिंग ही हैज नो वर्ल्डली डिजायर मनली ही हैज डिजायर टू सर्व कृष्ण नॉट ओनली डिजायर बाई ही यूज हिज ऑल सेंसेज इन द सर्विस ऑफ हिज लॉर्ड हु इज हिज लॉर्ड फॉर प्रहलाद महाराज दो इट हैज बीन टोल्ड कृष्ण वर्ल्ड बट निशिंग देव अपलेंस कैन इट गो टू वृंदावन ब्रज एंड कृष्ण ई नंद नंदन ब्रजेश नंदन हाउ ही कैन टच वट अबाउट अम्बरीश महाराज विशी ही गेज ऑल ही सेंसेस हेड टू डू प्रणाम माइंड टू थिंक एंड मेडिटेट कृष्ण टन to glorify krishna and chant to remember hari krishna and all of the thing especially who was in one seat was in bindavan mathura puri and he used to travel in whole twenty na uh, 12 but prominent everywhere so you can decide that who was his worshipful deity krishna hmm? i think that he would have heard the glories of gopis hmm? when he will go to govardhan fort he will meditate when he will go to radha kund fort he will meditate pradhan maharaj never can and he cannot come so we see oh Though he is not liberated, and Pranath Maharaj is liberated, but yet his grounds are so much high that even being not liberated, he is of some high stage of bhakti. In Sadhan Bhajan, he is doing, and up to Bhav was there, Rati was there, Shuddha Sattva. So very soon he will fall gopis, and then very soon he will achieve prema bhakti of braja. So he is most superior. But yet there is something. He hmm. wants to do so many things, but he is sadhak, not siddha. Hmm. Or he may at any time go to braja. in prakat leela and there he may have a birth of gopi and there he will practice something and by the association of nitya siddha gopis oh he may enter in krishna leela there is some sambhavana possibility possibility but yet something is he had not told that uh, i am in the guidance of roop manjari but by hearing he may have but still no then prem premi bhakta he was shuddha bhakta can you tell something about ambarish mar brief brief uh, yes how he was a Philosophical section, Guru Dev, not the Rupa Kanti. Difference between Nirvas and Amrish, and also first tell his history, life history, and then. Om Jnana Timanandasya, Jnana Jana Shalakaya, Chakshur Anmilitam Jena Tasmai Sri Guru Vein Maha. Although Shri Guru Dev has given all of the uh, deep, uh, sedantic, and uh, philosophical conclusions on the story of. Uh, Shri Ambarish Maharaj he has ordered me to speak a little something he's given me some remnant to chew on that he has given us so Maharaj Ambarish was 
uh, incredibly opulent and ruler of the whole planet and during Satya Yuga. And yet although he was uh, owning all things uh, and beautiful wife, palace, children, everything, uh, still he realized, oh, this whole world is nothing but like a dream and will all pass away very quickly. So he was not attached. So even though he was householder, he was exemplary Vaishnav, Uttam Mahabhagavat. And the story of uh, history of Maharaj Ambrish uh, and how he was saved from the curse of Dravasa is very interesting because it sets up a number of dynamics. One is the difference between the Bhakta and the Yogi. Uh, Dravas, a very powerful mystic yogi. Uh, if he wanted to curse you, become a crocodile, immediately you became a crocodile. Uh, if he wanted to kill you, immediately he could do that. And uh, we know from so many instances he was an in, uh, expansion of Shiva, so he was easily angered and also easily pleased. Uh, so he could also give very nice benedictions, like he gave the benediction that whatever Radharani would cook would taste like nectar. And this set up a, a situation where Mother Jasoda insisted that Radharani cook for Krishna. So Dravasa has an important role to play in Krishna's Leela. At this time, he also played a role. Marj Ambarish had been fasting from Kartik to Kartik, uh, at, uh, doing, observing all strictly Ekadasis and Dvadasis. So after one year of observing in Madhavan, in his palace in Mathura on the bank of Jamuna, this uh, codice became time to uh, break the fast and he fed sumptuously all the Brahmins and gave so many cows in charity and then just as he was supposed to break his fast, Dravasa showed up. Now as an uninvited guest, in Vedic culture uninvited guest is treated as good as God. So first he uh, worshipped Dravasa and then offered him some also prasad, but Dravasa said, first I, would, I want to do my uh, duty, uh, snan, take bath in Jamuna, say my, uh, do my meditation, then when I come back I will honor. So now another uh, interesting point, uh, Maharaj Ambarish was faced with a dilemma. While Dravasa was taking his time, he was meditating in the water, the time came to break his fast. And if, as we know, Dvadasi Paran, if you don't break it on the right time or before the time, then the effect of your Akadasi is ruined. So he, but at the same time, if he took before his guest, then this would also be a transgression of Vedic culture and a, and a, a sinful activity. So he himself uh, consulted with his advisors. They couldn't come up with a solution, but he himself came up with a solution that if I just take a drop of uh, Charnamrit water from the Lord, bathing of the Lord, that morning he had done a Maha Abhishek of the Lord, then it's said in the scriptures that to take water is is eating and not eating. So in this way he would break the fast and not break the fast. Also we learn if we uh, don't take anything then we can break with water. So uh, he had a, a dilemma here. Of the two, which was more important? To uh, transgress or make some offense to Bhakti Devi or to uh, ordinary Dharmic to a guest. So here we see he chose better not to offend Bhakti Devi herself. Kadasi is Bhakti Devi herself, Krishna himself also. So in this way, uh, when Nirvasa uh, realized that uh, Ambarish had broken the fast, he became very angry. He came back and he said, oh, you have no culture. You're not a, a devotee at all. And he took one of his jat, one of his uh, dreadlocks, and throwing it down on the ground with a curse, it became Kritya, a very fiery demon, who went to attack and kill Mars Ambrish. Now another difference comes up between the Bhakta and the Yogi. Although Dervas was so powerful, and Mars Ambrish, like a human being, not ex exhibiting these powerful mystic powers, Mars Ambrish just remained very humble and very peaceful and stood his ground and prayed to the Lord without any fear. At, at that time, the uh, Sudarshan Chakra of the Lord came and smashed that demoness to, into pieces and then began to go after Dravasa. So did Dravasa hold his ground? Was he peaceful? Not at all. He became very fearful for his life. So here's another difference between the yogi and the bhakta. The bhakta is always assured of the Lord's protection and he has no need for himself, like Prahlad Maharaj, to uh, try to defend himself. 
But the yogi, in spite of all his austerities and hardness and powers and mystic powers, when he's faced with a situation, he became very fearful for his own life. So Sudarshan began to chase Nirvasa through all the three worlds. He visited Brahma, said, please give me shelter. And Brahma said, whoa, the Sudarshan's kind of hot you, and I can't do anything to protect you. Please, you better go before uh, it causes trouble here. So Sudarshan in a moment can kill Nirvasa. But the Lord wanted to uh, glorify the, his devotee and uh, use Nirvasa to illustrate these points. So it was always just behind him, you know, like a buzzsaw singeing him and scorching him just at the tail. So he kept moving. Next he went to Lord Shiva's abode. Same th Lord Shiva, his expansion, like brother of Shiva, Shiva said, I cannot help you. Even myself at the end of the annihilation of the universe, I'm just, I, I also fear for what will happen. The, the glance of the Lord will destroy the whole universe. He's, and we ourselves cannot understand how his illusory potencies work. You'd better go directly to the Lord himself in Vaikuntha and take shelter there. So Nirvasa, he's so powerful he could even go into Vaikuntha. There he met the Lord and fell at his feet. Please protect me from your discus, huh? Sudarshan. Uh, Lord Narayan said uh, that the devotees are in my heart and I am in the heart of my devotees. I'm completely dependent upon them and I'm controlled by them. Actually, I don't know anyone else but my devotees. So, in this way, the Lord instructed him, if you want to get free from the offense to my pure devotee, I can't even save you. You must go to that devotee and beg forgiveness. So, this is also a very important teaching. We should be very, very careful not to offend Maha Bhagavats because uh, this will have a devastating effect on our spiritual life. And if we do inadvertently commit offense, then we should, like the Lord is instructing Devas, go to that devotee and fall at his feet and ask his forgiveness. So Devasa went back down. Now for Devasa, this whole time had passed very quickly, relativity of time and space. But back on earth, it had been one whole year. And Marj Ambarish was so, uh, as a devotee, was so soft-hearted, he was feeling so badly that because of him, Dervasa was being harassed by Sudarshan, that he was praying the whole time, oh please, my Lord, don't harm this uh, Dervasa. So it was actually the prayers of Ambarish that were keeping Sudarshan from killing him, Dervasa. So when Dervasa fell at Ambarish's feet, uh, Ambarish offered beautiful prayers to Sudarshan and he uh, disappeared. So now, Dervasa was saved, and he said, now I see the glories of the devotees of the Lord. Hmm? Uh, for, a, for a tiny offense, huh? he took a drop of water to, so that he could observe the rules of bhakti and ekadasi. Dervasa became offended and angry. And yet, when he went to try to kill Ambarish huh, with the fiery demon, Ambarish prayed for his safety. This is the devotee. Huh? He's not taking... On himself. So, so many lessons are there in this Upakyan, or history of Maharaj Ambarish, and we should meditate and deliberate on them very seriously. Uh, and just to uh, summarize, Gurudev has made the point that although uh, Maharaj Ambarish is sada, in other words, he's in, uh, he's in a form that's not his eternal form. And he will eventually achieve uh, a gopi form in Prakat Lila. And although he's not born perfect, huh, he's practicing the angas of devotion actively, whereas Prahlad Maharaj was born Siddha, perfect. Ambrish's position is higher. An example can be given of like which is more powerful, a, a baby lion cub or a big, strong German shepherd. A big German shepherd is. But one day the baby cub will be <laughs> bigger, better and stronger than the... German Shepherd. So Arjan Barish's devotion will fructify to Gopi Bhav Prem for Krishna Prem, whereas Marj uh, Prahlad, his love is uh, has some Aishvarya Gyan, knowledge of the opulence of the Lord, and he has no particular Ishtadev. So in this particular instance of Bhakti, we can also look at the Ishtadev that they're worshipping. For Prahlad Maharaj, the Lord may appear in the form of Nishringa, and he recognizes him in that way. He may appear as uh, Vamana Dev to his grandson Bali and he appeared and said, Oh my Lord, I now see you in this form and recognize you. So he has no particular deep mamata or attachment for a particular Ishta Dev, which is also a symptom of higher grade of bhakti. So therefore, Amar Jambarish is considered to be a Shuddha Bhakta. Thank you.
So, now some higher rank. Hanuman is called Premi Bhakta. Amarish Maharaj is Sadhak. He is meditating the past times of Krishna. And Hanuman, what doing? Being a Vaikunt planet himself, whole day and night, 24 hours serving Ram. In so many ways. Sometimes he has some affluence, sometimes not. Sometimes I swear here, but always Madhurji Bhav, Das Bhav. Hanuman, what doing? You should explain something in a book. Very brief. I want to touch Popish. Sonadya Natimirandha Sadyananjana Salakaya Chakchurun Militangjina Tasmai Sri Gurabi Namaha Bancha Kalpaturu Bhasta Kripa Sindhu Bhai Vacha Patita Nang Pavanibhu Vishnavibhu Namu Namaha. So, Srila Gurudev ordered me to discuss about Premi Bhakta Hanumanji. First, we had to know what is Prem. Our Purvacharya has explained Sammak Masri Nito Santo Mamatauti Sayankito Bhava Saiva Sangratma Budhai Pemani Gaddate. When Sammak Masri Nito Santo, when heart will be very smooth and when Bhava will more matured and possessiveness or minus will come too much that he is mine. In Bhavavastha, minus is there, but not too much, not condensed form. But in Premavastha, that minus or possessiveness is too much there, and heart becomes so smooth. If this type of bhakti is there, Bhava Saiva Sangratma Budhai Premani Gaddate, the spiritual scholars, they told that this is Prem. So Hanumanji has Prem. Possessiveness or minus for Sri Ramachandra and his associates. Hanuman never married. Why? Then he had to waste his time for his household life. He could not give 100% attachment for Lord Ramachandra. So he is born Brahmachari. When Lord Ram's potency, Sita was stolen by Demon Ravan, and Hanuman went searching for her. And he searched Sita Devi and gave message of Lord Ramchandra. And he became very angry. Oh, Demon Ravan kidnapped my mother Sita Devi. Hanuman burned the whole Lanka, which was made of gold. He burnt it completely. Prior to that, when Lord Ram and Lakshman was coming to search about Vivisan, and Hanuman brought him them, put Ram and Lakshman, one, all, all of, both of them, each each soldier, soldiers, and came to Kiskinda. Once, when Lord Ram invaded Lanka, to for invaded Lanka, to bridge his near to cross the ocean, Hanumanji, help of Nol and Neil and others, they made a bridge. They are writing name on the stone, Ram Ram, and putting their getting together and made a bridge. Once Lord Ramchandra thought, oh, these monkeys, they are making bridge, taking the help of my name. Okay, I can try. So Lord Ramchandra took some pebbles and went under a bush, and he threw one pebble, sink in the water. And second also. In the meantime, Hanuman came back with a very huge stone for the made the complete the bridge. He could not find Lord Ramchandra. Where is my Prabhu? Then he made his body very huge and he saw Lord Ramchandra is behind the bush. He jumped from there, arrived there. That's Prabhu. 
What are you doing? No, no, nothing. Go away and do your own job. Oil your own machine. Oh, Prabhu, please tell me what you are doing here. No, 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 nothing. You can go. But Hanumanji very determined to know. The Lord Amchandra told Hanuman, all of you taking the help of my name, making bridge and telling Ram Ram. So I want to test. If I throw a stone, it will float or sink. Then Hanuman began to smile. Oh Prabhu, we are taking the help of your name. So stones or rocks are floating on the water. To whom you give up? How they can float? They must go fall down, say so going down to the ocean. Not possible. In the same way, if Asya Bhagavan, Sadguru Pad Padma, or Bhagavan give up anyone from his heart, it will never be survived. So we have to be very careful. We should not do any offense. Lotus feet of Vaishnava was sent to neglect Gurudev. Another pastime of Hanumanji, when Lord Ram returned to Ajodha with Sita Devi and Lakshman, one day Sita Devi was making her up with Vormilan, etc. Hanumanji came, told Mother, What are you doing? Sita Devi replied, My dear son, I am putting Sindhu, meaning Vormilan. Now, what purpose? Sita Devi told, Your father, Lord Ramchandra, will long life. Really? She said, Yes. Hanuman went away. And Sita Devi dressed herself and went to royal assembly and took her seat next left side to Lord Ramchandra. Hanumanji, when she as soon as Sita Devi came out from her dressing room, Hanuman entered there, took all Sindur, mixed with oil, and put her whole and smear his whole body and he completely reddish and came to royal assembly. Seeing Hanumanji, Lord Ramchandra, Lakshman, Bharat, all are laughing and Sita Devi hiding her face under his veil smiling. Sita Devi understood the whole fact. What he did? Lord Ramchandra, Hanuman, why you dressed yourself like red today? Then Hanuman told, if my mother put a little bit sindur on his on her head, then you will be long life. So I want you to be long, long, long life. You never be disappeared from this world. So I put all sindur on my mother and my whole body. So still ever you seen Hanuman is red color. So it's called Sindure Hanuman. Moreover, one day, Sita Devi, Lakshman, Bharat and Satyugna, they held a meeting and told this monkey rendering all services we have no chance to render any service. So we have to quit his service and we shall distribute it among ourselves. So Sita Devi took charge of night service and Lakshman, Bharat and Satyamra, three brothers, they distributed among themselves other service. Next day when Hanuman came, there is no service left over for him. Hanuman requests to Lakshman, Bharat, Satyamra and Sita Devi, Please give me a tiny bit of service. They told you have served so much, no need to serve more, no, there is no leftover any service. Said, okay, then I can only click when Lord Ramchandra Ian. But the symptom of Bhagavan, there is no yearning, though no tiredness, no laziness, so it is not possible. So they said, okay, you can do, no problem. But they did not give any chance to Hanuman stay in the royal palace. Hanuman went out of royal palace sitting under a tree and only clicking and, and mind is chanting Joy Ram, Joy Ram, Joy Jaya Ram. And other hand, Ramchandra, Lord Ramchandra yearning and yearning. Sri Lakshman, Sri Bharat, Sri Satyuna and Sita Devi could not render any service. He is not taking anything, doing nothing, only yearning. Then they understood it must be done by that naughty monkey. Then all of them came to Hanumanji. Oh, Hanuman, what are you doing? Only Ramchandra, yearning and yearning. Hanuman told, what can I do? Because you kick me out and quit my all services, only give this menial service. I don't know when Lord Ramchandra will yearn because I'm out of palace, under a tree, so I don't want to miss any chance. So I'm clicking, so I don't want to miss the chance. Then they call him again, advice of Lord Ramchandra, and again engage his service. Thank you. Hare Krishna.
compare their bhakti with Hanuman. In brief, Srila Gurudev ordered me to speak about Prem Paravakta, the next ca ca uh, category of devotee superior to Hanuman is called Prem Paravakta and the devotees in that category include the five Pandavas. Yudhisthira Maharaj, Bhim Sen, especially Arjun, who is very n close to Krishna, and Nakul Sahadev, and Draupadi. So, you know that Krish Krishna is a very dear friend of Arjun. How do they associate with each other? Krishna can even become the chariot driver of Arjun, like his servant. He's driving his chariot, taking care of his horses. Arjun and Krishna, they can sleep together on the same bed. And once Naradrishi came to the uh, palace of the Pandavas and there he saw that Krishna was lying on the bed with his head this end and his feet this end. And Arjun was lying on the same bed with his feet where Krishna's head is and his head where Krishna's feet are. And on one side Draupadi was fanning and on the other side Rukmini and Satyabhama were fanning. And both were asleep. And as the Arjun was uh, sleeping, in his, as he was dreaming, oh, the name of Krishna was coming out from every pore of his skin. He was so much absorbing love for Krishna. When Narad saw this, he began to dance in ecstasy. Arjun, Krishna, Arjun, Krishna, Arjun, Krishna. How close Arjun and Krishna are. Krishna especially likes Arjun. Why? Because he very much resembles one Saka, one friend he has in Vrindavan called Arjun Saka. So he has a very close friendship with him. In addition to this, they have so many relationships. Krishna can become his chariot driver, is his friend, is his advisor also. And when he spoke Gita, he became like Guru and Arjun became, like disciple also. Not only that, but Krishna arranged that Arjun should marry his sister Subhadra. Once upon a time it happened that uh, Baldev Prabhu, he wanted that Krishna's sister Subhadra should marry Duryodhan. Mm -hmm. But no one else wanted it. Mm -hmm. Basudev, Devaki and Krishna, anyone, they were all against this idea. But Baldev is a very strong character so they were silent, they didn't say anything. But Krishna arranged that Arjun should come disguised as a sannyasi. Mm -hmm. So he came disguised as a sannyasi and made a bhajan kutir just outside Dwarka. Hmm? On the bank of the ocean, outside of Dwarka. So at that time, Subhadra, she was feeling very sad. Oh, Duryodhan, he wants to arrange my marriage. Sorry, Baldev wants to arrange my marriage to Duryodhan. I want to, hmm? I don't want to marry him. And she was quite attracted to Arjun. So then one day, the Subhadra, she dressed up very nicely and along with her Sakis, she heard the news that one sannyasi was staying just outside Dwarka and he's very powerful. If you'll give a blessing, then whatever desire you have, it must be fulfilled. So Subhadra, along with her Sakis, came there to uh, give some donation and offer pranam to that mm, sannyasi. But what happened? Oh, just uh, Krishna arranged that just behind the Bhajan Kutir, Arjun's chariot was parked there. So when Subhadra came, then Arjun took her quickly and got onto the chariot and was driving away. When Balaram saw this, he became very, very angry. Oh, stop him! We should stop him! We should uh, use force, call all the army and soldiers and everyone and fight with him. Krishna said, why are you getting upset? Hmm? This is actually Katriya's Dharma. At that time, when I stole away Rukmini, you supported me. So why are you going against him now? And in this way, Krishna, he pacified the uh, the anger of Baldev Prabhu and Arjun took away Subhad Subhadra. But rather, mm, when uh, the chariot was pulling away, Subhadra was driving the chariot and Arjun turned around with his bow and arrows and everything to fight all the warriors who were coming. So Krishna said, 
uh, you are saying that Arjun is stealing our sister Subhadra, but actually we think that Subhadra is stealing Arjun because she's driving the chariot and he's firing the arrows. Hmm? So in this way, Arjun was married to Krishna's sister. Also, so, Krishna told that if the husband of uh, Subhadra, will, you will kill, then he will be Vidhava. Because by her she has so good has explained. If you kill uh, Arjun, who is the, then your sister will become a widow, widower, because she has completely given her heart to him. So their relationship is already fixed. So in this way, he pacified Baldev Prabhu. So we see that Arjun is Krishna's Bhagnipati. That means the husband of Krishna's sister, and Krishna is Arjun's sala which means the brother of his wife. So their relationship is very, very strong. Also, uh, Arjun is the son of Kunti Devi, and Kunti Devi is the sister of Vasudev, and Vasudev is father of Krishna in his Mathura and Dwarka Leela. So in this way, they have so many relationships by marriage and by blood. So Srila Gurudev also uh, ordered me to now compare the devotion of Arjun and the devotion of Hanuman. So in this regard, there's a very beautiful pastime. It happened that once, hmm, Arjun, he was traveling on his chariot, and he came on the bank of a river, and there was one very big and strong monkey. He could understand, oh, this is Hanuman. And he said, oh, Hanuman, your Ishtadev, Lord Ram, Hmm? Why did he engage you and so many monkeys in making a bridge across the ocean? Hmm? This is, if he, he can easily cross over the ocean, if he can cross by himself, why did he engage you in making uh, a bridge? Hanuman said, oh, my Lord can do anything, but he gave some chance for s service for us. He's, Arjun said, so many monkeys made this bridge, I could make the bridge myself in only one moment. I can just get my arrows and by shooting one arrow, then I can make a, a bridge, very powerful bridge. Hanuman said, it may be so that you could make a bridge by your arrows, but you know, if you made a bridge by your arrows, it would not be able to withstand the weight of even one of us monkeys. Hmm? So in this way, they were arguing with each other. So then Arjun, he took up the challenge, and he took his bow and chanted mantra, and he began to shoot his arrows. And in a moment, they were on the bank of a river, he made one, bridge across that river from arrows in just a moment. So then Hanuman, yeah, this bridge was extremely strong. So Hanuman, he wanted to prove that actually, yes, you could make a bridge by your arrows, but it would not stand the weight of one monkey. So then Hanuman, he quickly went to the Himalayas and he collected lots of mountains and he tied one mountain onto every hair of his body. So he was completely covered in mountains on every hair of his body. Then he came back. And when he came back, so big and covered in mountains, then Arjun, he had a lump in his throat. So, oh no. <laughs> and Arjun began to pray, Oh Krishna, please protect my uh, honor. Please protect my honor. I am your devotee. And then Hanuman, he came and he put one foot on the bridge. So when he put one foot on the bridge, it was creaking a little, but it didn't break. So that time Hanuman was thinking, Oh my Lord Ram, please protect my honor. I am your devotee. So now Hanuman was praying to Lord Ram and Krishna, uh, Arjun was praying, praying to Lord Krishna. So just then Hanuman, he was going to put his second foot on the bridge to make it break down. But he looked down and he saw that all the water in the river had become red. Red. What's this? So then Hanuman and Arjun both, they came down and they went to have a look. And they saw that underneath the bridge, someone was there holding up the bridge. So when Hanuman looked, he saw that his Lord, Lord Ram Chandra was there holding up the bridge. And when Arjun looked, he saw that his Lord, Lord Krishna was underneath holding up the bridge. So at that time, then Krishna, he came out and he spoke to Hanuman. And he said, oh Hanuman, Arjun is my very near and dear devotee. I even, I am, I also render service to him. So how much more you should also honor and render service to him. And Lord Krishna, he requested Hanuman, you should serve Arjun by appearing on the flag of his chariot. So when you see the chariot of Arjun, you'll notice that Hanuman is there. 
Mm? And whenever so the time is required, then Hanuman will roar very loudly and scare away the enemies of Arjun. So this pastime is there to show us how the Lord, He has so much love and affection for His devotees. He protected the honor of Arjun by stopping the bridge from breaking. And also, oh, if He had not come, then uh, the bridge, it may have broken, so he also was very kind to Hanuman and Arjun both. But at the same time, he personally told Hanuman that, Oh yes, you are my servant, but the love of Arjun is superior in such a way that even I, I am his servant. So how much you should honor and serve him. So Hanuman, it's not possible for him to lie on the same bed as his Lord Ramachandra. How is it possible? He doesn't have such intimacy as Arjun can do. Arjun and Krishna, they are very close together. They can laugh and joke with each other. Sometimes Arjun would criticize Krishna because Kshatriyas, warriors, when they get together and then they brag about their deeds, how they've saved many, so many damsels in distress and how they've killed so many demons. So when it's time for Kshatriyas to give a report of their great activities, sometimes Krishna will stretch the truth a little bit. At that time, Arjun will say, Oh Krishna, how true your words are, how very true sarcastically. So he can even make some criticism and laugh and joke with Krishna. He's so intimate. But Hanuman, he cannot do that because he has Dasya Bhav. What is Dasya Bhav? In Dasya Bhav there is Krishna Nishta. The mind is fixed on the Lord and Krishna Tyag to give up all types of sense gratification for the service of one's beloved Lord. And in Dasya Bhav there is Mamata, possessiveness. And wherever there is possessiveness, then seva will flow. There will be seva vritti. But Arjun, he is a friend of Krishna. And because he is a friend, he has these ingredients in his love. Krishna, uh, Nishta, Trishna, Tag, Mamata, Seva. But he has one more thing. And that is called Visramba. Intimacy. Feelings of equality. And therefore, he can serve Krishna more co closely than Hanuman. But yet, <coughs> Arjun has some defect in his bhakti. It cannot be tell, told. Uh, lackness, but he has sometimes some appearance to Krishna, as Swadhyay Mai Bhakti. In the Mahabharata battle, <coughs> when Krishna showed him in universal form, then he feared. And he began to beg Atalais to Krishna, that I have told you, friend, actually you are not friend, you are lords of lords, supreme lord. I have done so many jokes with you, we have tolerated and it seems that you are my uh, what? wife's brother, but really these are not true. You are lords of lords. So excuse us, excuse me. In future, I will not do like this. So he has some Aswarji mood. But you know, that Aswarji mood cannot go to Vrindavan. Always covered by Madhuriya. So something is lacking there. If Arjun wants, then he will have to follow Arjun in Braja, who can climb on the so the Arjun cannot. He can give remains. He can chastise Krishna. And only by name, Krishna has so much affection for Arjun. So there is something. And also, we can take Uddhav of Dwarka. He is the Prime Minister. He is like Das. He is like Advisor. He is General Secretary. Everything. 
more dear than Valdev Prabhu. Even to Sattabhama Rukmani sometimes. But he has nothing to do in Braja. But he is so superior. So Krishna sent him. Why send Shamran in, in some Gyananjana Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksurangalitam Yenatas Maestri Guruvenama Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak a few words on the glory of Sri Uddhavji and to mention why he is superior, a superior devotee than Arjuna even or any of the other previous bhaktas mentioned. Uddhav is called Prematur Bhakta, the topmost of all the five stages of bhakti. He's overwhelmed in love of Krishna. Although he's not qualified to be a resident of Vrindavan, Lord Krishna felt him qualified to at least learn something from, from the Vrijabhasis and particularly from the gopis. Once, when Krishna was sitting up on his rooftop, looking over the Jamuna River to Vrindavan, sitting on his palace roof in Mathura, Uddhav came over and saw Krishna weeping uncontrollably. So Krishna took Uddhav's hand and put his hand in his own hand and addressed Uddhav like his brother. He said, you are everything to me. You're more dear to me than anyone, more dear to me than Lakshmi, more dear to me in some respects than even Baladev, and more dear than my own self. So you're the only one that I can request to help me in this mission. Go and console our parents, Jashoda and Nanda Baba. So Uddhava thought, our parents? That means Krishna is considering me like his real brother. And by saying that Nanda Baba and uh, Jashoda Mai are his parents, Krishna is intimating to me that Vasudeva and Devaki are not his real parents. So Krishna told him that they are practically dying without me, especially the gopis. The gopis are always absorbed in me and keep me on the chariot of their hearts. The only reason that they stay alive is because of my promise to them. Parson me aunga. When I left Braj so many months ago, I told them that I'll be back day after tomorrow. So believing that, even though I haven't come back for some time, Still, they're keeping alive, only thinking like this. We can't remain alive without Krishna, but if we die and Krishna does come and he sees that we're dead, then he will also not be able to remain alive. So in this way, uh, Krishna is weeping and telling, them, telling Uddhav that I must do something to console my parents and especially the gopis. So he sent Uddhav ostensibly or externally to console the residents of Vrindavan. But actually his real motive was that I learned how to love from the gopis, from the residents of Vrindavan, but particularly the gopis, and particularly Srimati Radhika, who is my Prem Guru, who just like our spiritual master teaches us how to dance, so Radhika's Prem teaches me, her dancing disciple, how to dance many novel dances. If I send Uddhav, he's the only one of all of my associates who's qualified to learn what is the meaning of the two and a half letter word, pray ma. So 
as I learned about love in the school of the gopis, I'll also send my dear most prime minister and friend and brother, Udavji. So Udav went, Krishna was walking with him to the chariot and staggering and practically falling over and telling Udav all the things that he'll be seeing, all the people that he'll be seeing. And finally, Udav got on the chariot and Krishna had to be escorted back to his palace because he could barely stand being so absorbed in glorification of the Brajbasis and especially the gopis. So Udav arrived in Vrindavan sort of evening time. And at first, he saw everything in Vrindavan filled with wonderful opulences. Not the lesser opulences, 